Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah. I'm from SheHoldsDearly.com and I want to talk about our living room. It's something that I've just been working on on and off, gosh, for like two years. I feel like I've been messy with it. Well, if you want to go back to the beginning, it's longer than two years. But some rooms come together more quickly than others and I kept hitting little roadblocks and I was like, I'm just gonna back off. I'm just gonna marinate on some of these ideas. I need to think about this. And I just would get distracted with other things that were going faster around the house. And so here we are. We are back in the living room. I mean, who am I kidding? I'll probably never truly be finished with the living room because I keep getting new ideas. I'm thinking about beams on the ceiling. I'm thinking about some faux painting on the walls. I recently watched Pride and Prejudice, the one with Keira Knightley, and thought, oh my gosh, I want to do my walls like the family has in that in that movie. This could go on and on, but let's catch everyone up who hasn't been following along with the living room progress. If we go back to the very beginning, this is what the living room looked like when we bought it. It's a 1906 farmhouse. It had been turned into a rental, pretty run down by the time we found it. And we were the fourth owners since 1906. So that's not very many owners. And there's a lot of love and happiness in this house we knew the previous owners and it was fun to catch up. There's actually a, a video, an old video, where we had the grandson who's in his 80s, grandson of the original builder, come and do an interview and a tour with us and tell us stories about the house. That was fun. We bought the house. There was a wood stove now where our TV was. It was all carpeted. We needed to rewire and we needed to replumb and take out several walls and we refinished the wood floors, which I'm sorry to say have not held up. Fur floors are not the way to go. It's very soft wood. It's very common wood in Washington, but it's really soft and it's just been impossible to keep scratch free. So I've got some ideas for what we're going to do with that. That will be for another video. But the first thing we did was rip out the carpet and try to restore these original floors. Uh, we added crown molding. We added different can lights over the, um, the window seat, over where the TV is currently. And I mean, some of my favorite things were the chandelier that we added, which is now over the desk, and then the sconce, which is behind me. And we've kept those for about 15 years and I still love them. I still think they work great for what we're doing in here. But once we got that done, then I painted it a, a blue, actually similar to the color that it is now. And then it went to white for a long time. And now it's to this color called Slate Tile. It's by Sherwin-Williams. I do love the color. It does make it feel a lot darker. I mean, to, anytime you take a room from white to a darker color like this, it's gonna feel pretty dramatic. So then I've had to bend over backwards to bring in more lumens with lighting and a lot of white touches, so the drapes and things. So we decided to do the trim work in the same color, just to give it that an elegance that I really love, but um, a higher sheen. So we did that with the trim. I got this new rug from Ruggable. I wish it were bigger. That's my, my only real complaint is that I wish it were bigger. So we're gonna solve that problem today. But I do adore, adore, adore the pattern on this rug. And a lot of things in this room have really um, taken their cues from this rug. So I matched the, the French door to our closet in here and the front door to the blue in this rug. The coffee table that I got from Facebook Marketplace is the perfect oval size that fits over the top of this medallion in the middle of the rug and it's glass. I loved that you can see the medallion through the table and just appreciate all of it together. And speaking of this table, we added casters to it. It needed to rise a little bit and I got these beautiful casters from Etsy that we added and I gilded it with sheets of gold, not real gold, and gave it a more of an old world look. One thing led to another and then I decided to paint the corner bookshelf and kind of create this little seating area where I have these chairs that were thrifted. They were $5 each and then I had them reupholstered, but 
So they're child sized slipper chairs, but my family still like finds their way over there and we'll sit down and eat a snack or something. And that little corner, kind of this tiny little bistro look has been really sweet. I found the lamp on Etsy and then styled up the bookcase to make it look like, kind of like it was built in. You know, anytime you do a color on color like that, it makes it feel more built in. Um, I styled with these beautiful books that I got at the antique store. Um, I have a champagne bucket, a lot of coral. I really am going for a dark academia, but it's leaning towards some light academia because it was just getting so dark in here with the blue walls. So I did bring in a lot of creams and whites. In fact, I'm noticing like as I'm looking around that pretty much all of the decorations are brown, white, or gold. And that's a good formula if you're trying to do a really dark muted color in a room that's really powerful, you pretty much have a good formula from there on out. You know, add maybe add some plants, maybe repeat that, that color again somewhere, but that the browns, the golds, and the whites, just bring those in and you've got a really solid color palette. In addition to painting the bookcase, I decided that we needed to do blue muntins they're called or mullions which are the crossbars in these windows back here so they're vinyl windows the crossbars are inside the glass so i cut little pieces of wood at one point i counted how many there were it was a ridiculous amount it took me like 30 hours to do this project i was really questioning my sanity by the end of that thing but i painted all these little wooden slats and they are glued with a, well, caulk, I use clear caulk, and I put those over all of the white mullions in the vinyl windows. And then everything around the trim is a paintable wallpaper. And so I cut strips of those and painted all that. I spray painted the latches gold. It was a beast, but it was so worth it. I feel like it really makes the room feel, you know, like an old world, like an English shop. I feel like I kind of had these like storefront windows look, look that I was going for and I'm really glad I did do it. <laughs> and it's all temporary, I can take it all off, just peel it all off, take a razor blade, get the caulk off when I'm ready to change the color, which is not going to be for a while because I don't want to. I do not want to do that again for a while. Then I styled up this secretary that I inherited and that was a lot of fun. I feel like this is the sweetest little corner right when you come in and we use it We use it once in a while. A secretary desk is just so sweet, especially if you have an area that there's not a lot of depth and you want to put a piece of furniture in there, like you need the storage, you need a little bit of seating or something. They're not very deep. And of course, then the top flips up if you want. But I love the secretary desk here. My husband added an outlet. It was actually my Christmas gift. So if you need to um, pull your weight a little bit and get a project done on the house as your gift for something, I highly recommend that. So he added an outlet so I could have a real lamp in this corner and I made a pleated lampshade. This was a thrifted lamp. I love the capice detail on it. And it is, I think I said that right, Capiz, the shell detail. I got it at Goodwill and then made this pleated lampshade. I have a, a reel, it's actually my most popular reel on Instagram. So if you wanna see the tutorial for that, check that out. And there's also a tutorial on my blog. So whichever one you want, do you wanna read it, do you wanna watch it? I can help you out with that. And then again, we see a lot of these like organic, um, natural pieces, lots of whites, golds, and old books and things mixed into that for decorations. We did the frame TV, this is out of order, but we did the frame TV and decided that we weren't gonna buy the $700 frame and we just, we built this frame. And I think it was about $20. So you can do that. I will, actually I'll give you the um, link here so you can watch that video if you wanna do your own frame for your frame TV. I found these dogs on Facebook Marketplace. They arrived completely shattered. Every time I order something on Facebook Marketplace, it arrives broken and I always have to like rebuild the thing. So, warning. <laughs> but I did glue them back together and then they were black. Uh, but I just felt like it was a little bit too dark all together against the wall. So I'm spray painting these with my favorite gold. It's called Champagne Bronze. 
and I just want a little bit more of a contrast against that background color on the wall there. And okay, so that, that brings us up to date. So if you're new here, that's kind of what we've been working on. I've got some new things that I haven't shown anyone yet. And then I'll probably um, throw out some of my cupping ideas that have not happened yet. We got these beautiful drapes. Let me just give a shout out to Two Pages. Are you familiar with Two Pages? This is not sponsored, but you have to check them out if you want custom pleated drapes. They do any size, everything's custom made for you. And so I wanted drapes that truly covered the windows. And I bought thermal lining and blackout lining because we watch movies in here. We also heat with the wood stove. The house gets really cold in the winter. And so the liner was, was just awesome. It was such a um, selling point for me to be able to have liner that did blackout and had that thermal aspect to it. I'm gonna link these below but there's a ton of different pleats that you choose from and then different fabrics for samples. And I just really, I'm so happy with them. I bought them a little bit long so they kind of puddle on the floor and they're just so elegant and have that old world feel. I didn't even try, I didn't even think about ironing them or steaming them just because I love that like casual rumpled look of the linen. I will definitely be ordering from two pages again. Then over on the piano, I did this for Christmas and I just left it because I loved it so much. I found these bleached ferns and oh my gosh, I want to learn how to DIY these first of all. In my head, it's a cool DIY. But I went ahead and I bought two more packs of them because I really wanted to beef up this look and they're just literally scotch taped onto the piano and I want this sort of asymmetrical swag going on. So we're gonna tape those in place and make it a lot fuller. But I love the texture, sort of that lacy elegance that I feel like it's just really unique and it softens the hard edges of the piano. I just really love how it works with this whole corner here. For spring, I have all of my bird's nest under cloches. I haven't done that before, but I love how you can take, you know, a collection of things and it just has such an impact when they're all similar like that. You just group them together. So this is my little spring vignette. And of course this picture that says, God bless our home. I found this antiquing with some of my sweet blogging friends in Michigan a couple years ago. I did make this, I was going to film it and uh, I just, I was out of time, I was rushing through it, so I, I can make a bulletin board pretty fast. So I whipped this thing out, didn't film it for you. But I do have an old tutorial, which I will link for you here, uh, if you wanna make yourself a knockoff Bella Designs bulletin board. It's a foam core board, and I use linen and then upholstery tacks. I feel like it's a little bit small maybe for the over the desk and I'm kind of wrestling with what I could do differently. I love that it's simple. I love that it's cream. I love that it's rectangular so it's bringing some balance you know with the piano over there and then the TV on the left side of it. But it just it feels a tiny bit small so I'm actually right now I'm thinking of tracking down a architectural piece that I could maybe paint cream and put over the top of it. I have a really amazing architectural salvage yard that I can go to. Maybe I'll dig through that. I'll have to take you along when I do that. I did make these pillows. Some The um, caramel colored fabric was thrifted when I went to Round Top a couple years ago with my design students. And then this one I will link for you. This is a really popular fabric. I think it sells out a lot. But if you buy these on Etsy with this fabric, it's very expensive. It's a cheaper route to buy your own fabric and just make, you know, this, this, is, a, this is a Euro size pillow. But um, yeah, that's the way to go if you want to save some dollars on that idea. So for today, I, 
I am going to add a base rug underneath. And this one is a, the Wayfair rug. It's been sitting in my living room for way too long. I love the basket weave texture of it. I love that it's seagrass. So if you're in the market for a natural rug, I really recommend seagrass because it's grass from the sea and you can hose it off. One, I've got a ruggable rug so I can wash it in the dryer. And then under that, I have this seagrass rug because I do think it needs a little bit more width. And I, I've bought the largest one for the ruggable rug. So we're gonna use this Wayfair one as our base layer and we're gonna put the two together. I love the trim on this. I feel like it matches the drapes and just brings just a little bit more refinement to have that extra banding on it. Oh, and I know you're curious about the settee. Um, this gorgeous piece is the crowning glory of this room. Now, last week's video was all about why we had to get a new front door because we bought this on Facebook Marketplace. I paid $500 for it. And it is my sixth couch in this room in the last 15 years. I buy too many couches, it's true. But, you know, I just turn around and sell them. I don't pay very much for them. I turn around and sell them. And so it's not like I'm wasting money. I really do some recycling couches. Or I, you know, I have kids moving out so I give them to a child. But we couldn't get this one through the front door because the legs don't come off. Modern day couches, you can get the legs off. So we had to uh, install a larger front door, which we were needing to do anyway. We've been talking about it for years, but this was the straw that broke the camel's back. As an added bonus, it actually is, you can see, literally the exact same color as the walls. What are the odds? It's in beautiful condition. I mean, I I really fell in love with it because of the frame when I saw it online, and I um, I love that it was from the 1800s, and I thought, well, pff, I'll just get it recovered in whatever I want, and I don't know if I will. I think I'll wait until I absolutely have to. This is the original fabric. It's in really really good condition. The cushions are down. I've never had down cushions. I've had feather, but down is the ultimate luxury. They do have to be fluffed up, but then they're just so luscious to sit in. So I have this piece. I wanna show you to something that you can do in your own house, is to pull your couch off the wall. Like I've done here, I have this space here between the wall and you don't have to put something behind it, but if you have any extra room where you can do this, it's just, for some reason, it just looks more high end. It looks. I feel like it, it's kind of communicating that you feel like you have enough room and so you're using it up more. It's just, it's, there's just something more like confident feeling about it. If you pull your couch even like six inches off the wall and have it float, they call it floating in the middle of the room a little bit. I don't think it really needs pillows. I'm just adding this fur throw and I feel like that's all it's necessary for now. I'm doing less and less pillows because I don't like to actually fluff them. I don't like, they're just feeling kind of high maintenance right now. So I don't like to have to wash them or um, just keep styling them all the time. But I do have pillows available if someone wants to take a nap. The latest find I bought was this lamp here behind me. And this also is a Facebook Marketplace lamp. Originally, I thought it was a $500 lamp, but we figured out that the lady had made a mistake. It's not the, the brand that she thought it was. And so um, I was able to talk her down to $100, which I think is still really nice. I love that it has four bulbs. So I get a lot of light out of this. I feel like it's finally enough light in this room and she wrote me back. I think she was selling it for her mom. She says, I checked the lamp and it has like, it's kind of worn like up on the, the stand. I don't know, she was just saying it's not super shiny. And I was thinking, oh, like it has patina. <laughs> I mean, she had no idea who she was talking to. I have no problem with patina. Although I looked at it and it looks like somebody got wax on it or something. So we're gonna try to clean it here. I just went online for some DIY like brass cleaner and it looks like if I do like a salt and lemon juice, we can scrub it up. So hopefully I can polish it up. And honestly, if not, you know me, patina is fine. So the last few things I would like to do in this space, and you can tell me what you think too, is to really style up the desk. So my idea was that this space would be good for 
my college age kids to bring their friends and they could come hang out and study. So I have two desks in the living room. It's a very Jane Austen style thing to do, but I haven't actually finalized the styling of this one desk over by the window seat. So I might want to tweak it just a little bit more. If you ever are struggling with vignettes or how to style something, the book you have to get is the Miss Mustard Seed book. I will link it below. She does so great at styling. And you can just, I'll just flip through it and get inspiration on different pieces I could pull together and um, it really helps me. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is still probably having white armchairs in here. I did have a set there, the cats were scratching them really bad so I put, put them up in my room to protect them. And they're actually so damaged, I think I'm gonna reupholster them. And that may be an upcoming video where I show you how to reupholster chairs. Again, because <laughs> I did it once. I still may switch out these recliners. They're a little bit dark. My husband does love that they're recliners, but we'll see. I am looking on Facebook Marketplace for some lighter colored chairs, maybe with some caning or something. Um, so that's on my radar. And then the last thing for now would be that I would replace the outlet covers. That's an, an added thing. I know a lot of people don't think about that, like that that's something that can be done, but replacing your outlet covers can really elevate a space. So I might look for something gold or sort of like an oil rub bronze. watching I hope you enjoyed that it was really fun to go down memory lane and look at all that's been done it's, you should do that even with your own space I feel like to just celebrate how far you've come like houses are a lot of work 
and they're wonderful and it's a double-edged sword be though because sometimes you feel like you have so far to go and you don't stop to celebrate what you've done. So thank you for celebrating with me today. It's my honor to create content for you and inspire you with your spaces. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, so I can continue to send you more videos and I will talk to you soon.